Beyond the Shadow's Veil. The High Roller by Derek Slayton. Chapter 1 The sun ascended over the horizon, illuminating the famed Las Vegas Strip with its golden embrace, a spectacle that rivaled the brilliance of the city's nightlife. Richard Beckham sat behind the wheel of his car at an intersection adjacent to the interstate, his gaze drawn down the strip, admiring its dual nature. One side bathed in the gentle morning light, the other adorned with the vibrant hues of neon signs, still glowing despite the encroaching dawn. Running his weathered hands through his thinning hair, Richard's face twisted into a grin that spoke of a life weathered by time and trials. Four days of driving. But I finally got here, he muttered to himself, his voice containing a mixture of exhaustion and satisfaction. Reaching for a large cup of coffee, nearly drained to the last drop, Richard emptied its contents in one swift motion before casually discarding the cup onto the cluttered floorboard, joining a small graveyard of other discarded containers. As the traffic light shifted to green, Richard consulted his GPS and turned right, guiding his vehicle towards the far end of the strip. He savored every moment of the drive, absorbing the sights and sounds of the bustling city. The towering casinos, the mesmerizing fountains, and the occasional sight of weary gamblers stumbling out into the daylight, their disheveled appearance betraying a night spent in pursuit of fortune and pleasure. As he followed his GPS instructions, Richard turned into the parking lot of the Fortune Hunter Casino, its facade aglow with a radiance that seemed almost divine. Carefully navigating through the lot, he pulled up to the valet parking area. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the Fortune Hunter. Are you checking in? greeted the valet with professional courtesy. Good morning, my man. Yes, I'm checking in for the high roller package, Richard replied, his tone reflecting a mix of anticipation and weariness. At the mention of the high roller package, the valet's demeanor noticeably perked up. His smile widened, his posture straightened, and he swiftly reached for his walkie-talkie. We have a high roller on the premises, he announced over the device, listening intently for a response before nodding in confirmation. Sir, may I have your name? The valet inquired, turning his attention back to Richard. Richard Beckham, he answered, offering his name with a sense of subdued pride. Very good, Mr. Beckham. If you would like to head to the counter, I will take care of your car, and your personal belongings will be brought up to your room once you check in, the valet informed him, exuding professionalism. Richard nodded in acknowledgement and reached into his pocket, retrieving a $10 bill. Handing it over, he watched as the valet accepted it with gratitude. That's very generous of you, sir. Please enjoy your stay, the valet expressed his appreciation. I just drove halfway across the country. I intend on living it up to the fullest, Richard declared with excitement. As Richard stepped into the casino, the automatic doors parted, revealing a sensory overload of sights, sounds, and smells. Cigarette smoke wafted past him, mingling with the cacophony of a thousand slot machines chiming in unison. The dimly lit room was punctuated by the flashing lights of the gaming machines, their brilliance nearly blinding him. Taking a moment to absorb the spectacle, Richard spotted the front desk amidst the hustle and bustle. While several people queued in line, the high roller check-in stood conspicuously apart, adorned entirely in gold. Living the high roller life already, Richard quipped to himself as he bypassed the line, approaching the counter where a cheerful young woman greeted him. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the Fortune Hunter. Are you my high roller, Richard Beckham? She inquired with a warm smile. Why, yes, I am. Looks like word travels fast in this place, Richard remarked with a hint of amusement. Oh, yes, sir, we pull out all the stops for our high rollers. Give me just a moment to pull up your reservation, the girl replied, her fingers dancing across the keyboard. Okay, Mr. Beckham, I have you right here. According to my screen, you have deposited $25,383. Does that sound right? She confirmed, glancing up at him. For the cash, yes, my car should be in there as well, Richard clarified. Apologies, many of our high rollers fly in. Let me check on that, the girl responded before returning to her tasks, communicating in hushed tones over her walkie-talkie, which Richard couldn't quite make out. As he waited, a cocktail waitress approached, bearing a tray laden with an assortment of beverages. 
Welcome to the fortune hunter, Mr. Beckham. Would you care for a drink? She offered with a polite smile. Thank you, but it might be a little too early to start drinking. Richard declined politely. The waitress turned her tray to reveal a steaming cup of freshly brewed coffee. Alcohol-free, just finished brewing a few minutes ago, she explained with a smile. Richard offered a grateful smile as he accepted the cup of coffee, placing another $10 bill on the waitress's tray before she departed. Okay, Mr. Beckham, I've heard from our boys in the garage, and we have your car valued at $3,500, so if you give me a minute, I will add that. The check-in girl began, but Richard interjected before she could finish. $3,500? No, that's not right. When I filled out the form online, I was told it was $5,000, Richard pointed out, his tone firm but controlled. The check-in girl hesitated, her fingers pausing over the keyboard as she processed his statement before shaking her head. I'm sorry, sir, but there's nothing I can do except tell you how much we can offer on the car, she explained apologetically. Richard let out a deep sigh, his frustration bubbling beneath the surface. Before he could respond, the check-in girl offered a solution. However, I can turn you over to our concierge who will be able to assist you further, she suggested. Richard's mood shifted from irritation to gratitude, and he responded with a smile. Thank you so much for your help. The girl stood up from her desk, indicating a small room adjacent to the check-in area. If you want to head through there, he'll take care of you, she directed. Nodding in acknowledgement, Richard approached the door and gave it a light knock before entering. Hello? He called out uncertainly. Please come in, Mr. Beckham. I am the concierge, and I will help you out with your issue, a voice replied warmly from within. Richard stepped into the room, closing the door behind him before settling into a chair. The concierge, a tall and imposing figure in his 70s, remained focused on his screen, typing away in a methodical manner. Now, I understand that you have an issue with your vehicle valuation. Is that correct? The concierge inquired in a deep, resonant voice, without glancing up. Yeah, I was told it was going to be 5,000, and it only ended up being 3,500, Richard confirmed. $1,500 does not seem like that much of a discrepancy, sir. Especially given the additional miles on the vehicle, the concierge reasoned, his tone measured. Yeah, I was off on my mileage estimate. I drove out from Knoxville, Tennessee, and there was some bridge construction over the Mississippi. Had to take a hell of a detour, Richard explained. Knoxville? That's quite the drive, the concierge remarked. Normally it's pretty easy. Just hang a left on the 40 and drive straight for five days. It just didn't play out that way, Richard replied with a wry smile. After a moment of typing, the concierge turned his attention back to Richard. Now, Mr. Beckham, I have looked everything over, and I have a bit of bad news, he began. Unfortunately, I will not be able to give you the additional $1,500 credit for your vehicle. While I have a lot of sway around here, those decisions are made above my pay grade, he continued, his tone regretful. Well, so much for being a high roller then, Richard muttered. Do hold on, sir. While I cannot give you more money for your vehicle, I do have other means of compensation at my disposal, the concierge interjected. Such as? Richard inquired, intrigued. Normally, upon depletion of your bankroll, you are immediately taken to checkout. Now, given the situation, I can offer you an extended checkout, the concierge explained. An extended checkout? That's it? Richard questioned, a hint of skepticism in his voice. There is a little more to it than just sleeping in, sir. Not only will you have until the next morning for checkout, but you will be entitled to a last meal before departing, custom order from our kitchen, and full bar, and I can offer you a $300 meal credit, the concierge elaborated. Richard considered the proposal for a moment before making a counteroffer. Make it 400, and you have yourself a deal, he negotiated, a determined look in his eyes. The concierge nodded, finalizing the agreement in the computer, and a moment later, the printer behind him whirred to life. As your waiver prints off, I need to go over the house rules with you, the concierge stated, turning his attention back to Richard. I'm ready. Lay them on me, Richard replied, leaning forward attentively. Very good. 
The High Roller package comes with perks that no other package enjoys, but there are strict rules. Upon check-in, you will be confined to your floor until your departure. To ensure this, we will have guards at the elevator and stairs, the concierge explained, outlining the protocol. For what I'm paying, I have no intention of leaving, Richard remarked confidently. The concierge nodded, retrieving a pamphlet and placing it in front of Richard. Opening it, Richard found a list of products with various prices beside them. Very good. Now, thanks to our agreement with the State and Gaming Commission, all local and state laws have been removed from that floor. As you can see from the pamphlet, we offer a wide variety of drugs, the concierge informed him. Richard whistled softly as he perused the prices listed. Being a high roller isn't cheap, is it? He remarked with a wry smile. With the price comes a certain level of quality. Everything is pure and of the highest quality, so you do not have to worry about your drug of choice being cut with drain cleaner or something else you wouldn't want in your body, the concierge assured him. That is good to know, Richard acknowledged, nodding in appreciation. As Richard continued to look over the pamphlet, he raised another question. What about companionship? He inquired. We have a number of trusted private contractors we have partnered with and who would fit into any category you can think of. Their rate begins at $1,000 a day and covers everything a rational person would consider normal. Anything else you negotiate with them is between you and them. However, and I cannot stress this enough, they are untouchables. While there are no laws on your floor, if they come to any harm, it is grounds for immediate checkout. Is that understood? The concierge clarified. I'm 52 and had my soul destroyed by one of the most vile women to ever grace God's green earth, and despite that, I've never raised my hand to a woman. I'm not about to start now, Richard asserted firmly. My apologies, Mr. Beckham. I was not implying anything of the sort. It's just a reading of the rules, the concierge apologized sincerely. You're good, man. I just went through some lies and shit during the divorce, so it's a bit of a sensitive topic, Richard explained with a nod. I understand, and again, my apologies, the concierge replied sympathetically. The concierge retrieved the stack of papers from the printer and placed them in front of Richard, who began reviewing them carefully. There are a couple more rules to go over. While all laws are suspended on your floor, the hallway is an exception. Not only is it a safe space for our staff and contractors, but it is also for your safety as well. Sometimes our high rollers like to speak with their neighbors, and the hallway is the place to do it. However, if you enter one of their rooms, there are no laws. So tread carefully, the concierge explained. Understood. Is that it? Richard inquired. There is one last rule. As I'm sure you know, our high roller package is immensely popular, and the wait list is quite significant, the concierge continued. Tell me about it. I booked this thing six months ago, Richard remarked with a wry smile. As a result, the house rules state that at midnight, you must wager at least $10,000, or your remaining bankroll, on a single bet. The game choice is yours, between any of our half-dozen variations of poker or blackjack. The more you win, the longer you can stay, the concierge elaborated, revealing the high stakes of the game. Richard let out an impressed whistle at the magnitude of the wager. 10,000, that's a high number. But even if I get unlucky, I should be able to stay here a few days. Okay, where do I sign? Bottom of the page. However, I must ask before you do. Have you read the agreement in full? Knowing that once you sign, there is no going back, the concierge cautioned, ensuring Richard understood the gravity of his decision. Yep, read it multiple times before I even applied. I know what I'm getting into, Richard confirmed confidently. Fantastic, please proceed, the concierge replied, indicating where Richard needed to sign. Upon completion, the concierge smiled warmly. Thank you, Mr. Beckham, and welcome to the High Roller Club at the Fortune Hunter. Good luck to you. Chapter 2 Richard rode the elevator up to the top floor, reserved exclusively for high rollers. As the door slid open, he was greeted by two imposing security guards, their handguns prominently displayed on their hips. Name? One of the guards inquired, his tone firm. Richard Beckham, Richard replied, meeting the guard's gaze confidently. 
The guard glanced down at his phone, presumably checking a list, before nodding in acknowledgement and motioning for Richard to proceed. Please stay in the middle of the hallway. Do not knock on any of the doors. Is that understood? The guard instructed, his voice leaving no room for ambiguity. Yes, sir, Richard affirmed respectfully. This way, the guard directed, leading Richard down the hallway. The top floor comprised six expansive suites, three on each side of the building. As they passed the first set of doors, Richard could hear various sounds emanating from within. To his right, he heard thumping music, which prompted concern. Sensing his unease, the guard addressed his unspoken thoughts. Don't worry, sir. The rooms themselves are soundproof. Because we have contractors up here, we have to have the ability to hear them if they are in trouble. I assure you that the only time you're going to hear anything from other rooms is if you step out into the hallway, the guard explained reassuringly. That's good to know, Richard acknowledged, feeling somewhat relieved by the explanation. As they approached the next set of rooms, the door on the right swung open, and a middle-aged man poked his head out. What's up, Jimmy? The guard greeted him casually. Nothing much. Just heard some voices and thought you might be my breakfast, Jimmy replied with a grin. The kitchen is running a few minutes behind this morning. It'll be up shortly, the guard informed him. So I have a new neighbor, huh? Jimmy remarked, casting a curious glance at Richard. The guard noticed Richard's wariness, which Jimmy saw, so he sought to alleviate any concerns. Don't worry, friend. I'm as harmless as they come. I'm just here for the drugs and the women, Jimmy quipped, offering a disarming smile. The guard glanced back at Richard, giving him a subtle nod of assurance. I'm Richard, Richard introduced himself cautiously. The name's Jimmy. I've been here for six weeks and have the bankroll for at least another six months, so once you get settled in, if you have any questions, want some company suggestions, or want to knock back a few, just give a knock at the door, Jimmy offered genially. I appreciate it, Jimmy Richard responded, feeling a sense of camaraderie already forming between them. The older man nodded before retreating into his room, leaving Richard alone with the guard. The guard then swiped the card to open the door, ushering Richard into the opulent suite. As he stepped through, Richard's breath was taken away by the spectacle before him. The suite was vast, with a sprawling marble floor housing a pool table at its center. Multiple seating areas adorned the space, and the largest television set he had ever seen dominated one wall. Just off to the right, the guard motioned for Richard to head towards the kitchen area. Your personal belongings are in the bedroom over on the right, and everything else in here is pretty standard. However, over here in the kitchen area are a couple of key things. You have beer on tap and a complimentary bottle of whatever you selected. There's plenty of non-alcoholic beverages in the refrigerator as well, the guard explained, gesturing towards the amenities. Beside the bottle of scotch, there was a wooden box and a large menu. Opening the box revealed a collection of gambling chips and a cell phone. Whenever you need something, use this phone. It's a direct line to the concierge. Place your order off the menu, and it will be delivered to your door, the guard elaborated. What's with the chips? I thought everything was handled digitally, Richard inquired. For the most part, it is. This is if you want to tip anybody, or if you feel like doing some gambling, the guard clarified. The guard then led Richard to a small, darkened room on the left, revealing a sitting area and a small gambling table. Use the device there on the right to punch up any game you want. If it's played on the floor, then you can play it up here, the guard instructed. Richard entered the room, examining the table. He noticed that the center of it was separated by a revolving glass door. You guys aren't taking any chances, are you? Richard remarked, impressed by the security measures. There are no laws in this room, so we have to take precautions to prevent theft, the guard explained matter-of-factly. Understood, Richard acknowledged. As the guard walked back out and headed towards the front door, Richard reached into the box of chips and pulled out a $10 one, flipping it over to the guard as a token of appreciation. I appreciate that, sir, the guard responded gratefully. Thank you for giving me the tour, Richard replied sincerely. Of course, sir. Enjoy your stay, 
the guard bid farewell as he exited the suite. Alone at last, Richard looked around, soaking in the luxury surrounding him. Despite living more than half a century, he had never set foot in a room this magnificent, let alone had it catered to him. What to do first? Richard pondered aloud as he walked over to the menu, considering his options. Yeah, some food would be good. And maybe a little pick-me-up or two, he said. Richard's sly grin widened as he grabbed the phone. For the majority of his life, he had always flown on the straight and narrow. But this was his chance to live life to the fullest, and he was going to take advantage of it. As soon as he hit dial on the phone, it was immediately picked up, the concierge's voice startling him because it came on so quickly. Yes, Mr. Beckham, what can I get for you? The concierge inquired politely. Oh, hey, can I get a large supreme pizza? Richard requested casually. Certainly, sir. What else can I have sent up? The concierge prompted. Richard hesitated for a moment, almost like he was embarrassed for what he was asking for. The concierge picked up on it immediately. Mr. Beckham, I am not here to judge. I am here to fulfill your wishes, the concierge reassured him. Richard nodded to himself, finally gaining the confidence. Okay, then I'd like a number 12, a number 16, and a 42, Richard ordered. Very good, sir. That would bring your total to $800, the concierge informed him. You know, I'd really like someone to enjoy this with, Richard added thoughtfully. Yes, sir. And your preference? The concierge inquired. Um, female. Richard replied tentatively. Excellent. Any other defining features? The concierge asked, ready to accommodate his request. Maybe dark hair? Some tattoos too? If they enjoy a 25-year-old scotch, that would be a plus. But not a deal-breaker, Richard specified, his imagination running wild with possibilities. I have a few people I can reach out to. Your consumables should be delivered within the half hour, and your companion will arrive around noon. The guards will keep track of the time, the concierge assured him. Awesome, thank you, Richard responded gratefully. Will there be anything else? The concierge inquired politely. That's all for now, Richard confirmed. The phone line went dead as Richard set it down. He stood there for a moment, looking around and trying to figure out what he wanted to do. Finally, his eyes drifted down to his chips. Staring at them for a moment, he finally shrugged. I drove all this way. Seems kind of silly to not gamble a little, Richard reasoned with himself. Richard grabbed 500 in chips before walking over to the private gambling room. As he opened the door, the lights came on and the game selector activated. He scanned over the options before selecting blackjack. As soon as he hit the button, he could hear movement coming from behind the glass, like an elevator moving up. A moment later, a young female dealer appeared on the other side of the glass, sporting a big fake smile. Good morning, Mr. Beckham. Are you ready to play a little blackjack today? She greeted him. I am, but please call me Richard, he replied casually. The dealer nodded, though her forced smile seemed strained. Richard noticed but chose to overlook it. So what are the bets? Richard inquired. Whatever you would like them to be, no minimum, no maximum, the dealer replied. Ten bucks a hand sound good to you, Richard proposed. Sounds good to me, Richard, the dealer agreed, still struggling to maintain her smile. Richard took a seat, placing his first bet and quickly hitting 21. All right, Lady Luck is with me today, he exclaimed as the dealer paid him out. They played half a dozen hands, losing several before Richard hit another 21, celebrating with a fist pump. There we go, back on track. Richard cheered, noticing the dealer's struggle to keep her smile. Are you doing okay back there? You look like it's your money I'm taking, Richard observed, expressing concern. I'm sorry, sir. I'm still not used to working on the high roller floor, the dealer confessed. Take a deep breath and relax. I'm over here having the time of my life. I'm sure you've seen some crazy things with the no rules crowd, but I assure you that I am as laid back as they come, Richard reassured her. The dealer relaxed a bit, dealing out a few more hands before the doorbell to the unit went off. 
It looks like lunch is here, Richard remarked, glancing down at his dwindling stack of chips. And you beat me up pretty good, he added with a chuckle, grabbing $50 worth of chips and placing them into the center ring. That's for you. I hope that your day gets better, Richard said kindly. The young woman hesitated before accepting the tip, managing another forced smile as Richard left the room. He walked to the front door, opening it up to see a young man with a pushcart. Did somebody order a pizza? The delivery boy asked. And some other fun stuff, Richard confirmed with a grin. Yes, sir, indeed. I got you covered, the delivery boy replied with a smile. Richard motioned for the young man to come in. As the cart came to a stop, he pulled the top off of the tray, revealing one of the most incredible-looking pizzas Richard had ever laid eyes on. You people go all out here, don't you? Richard remarked, impressed. We aim to please, sir. The delivery boy replied with a smile. The delivery boy reached under the cart, pulling out three small plastic boxes, each one with numbers etched onto the top. He laid them out on the counter. The numbers are the same as they are on the menu, so you know what you're getting. If it's your first time delving into this wonderful world, feel free to pick up the phone, because we are more than happy to give recommended dosages, the delivery boy explained. I might just take you up on that, Richard responded with a grin. Richard grabbed 20 in chips and handed them over as he followed the delivery boy to the door. You have fun now, sir, the delivery boy called out cheerfully as he walked off. As Richard stepped out, a loud noise drew his attention to the left, away from the elevators. It was a constant smacking noise, like something was hitting wood with a dull thud. A moment later, he flinched when there was a horrified scream. Richard looked back towards the guards, who were diving into their lunches, not concerned about the noise in the least. As another pained scream was let out, Richard tried his best to ignore it as he went back inside to enjoy his lunch. No laws up here, Richard, and no judgment either, Richard reminded himself, shaking his head as he secured the door shut, determined to focus on enjoying his time in the extravagant surroundings of the high roller suite. Chapter 3 Richard sat on the balcony, basking in the warmth of the sun as he admired the view of the bustling Las Vegas Strip below. Thousands of people moved about, immersed in their vacation experiences. To his right, a generous glass of 25-year-old scotch awaited him. He took a sip, relishing its rich flavor. This is some fantastic scotch. Can't believe I waited this long to go for the good stuff, he mused, shaking his head with a laugh. Of course, if I had come home with a $500 bottle of booze, Carol would have murdered me. Or I would have downed it and murdered her. Either way, it wouldn't have been good. As he chuckled to himself, the sound of sirens from below caught his attention. Peering over the railing, he observed a scene unfolding in the parking lot, police cars with lights flashing and sirens blaring, confronting a group of people on the sidewalk. It seemed to be some sort of protest. Richard raised his glass in mock salutation. It is way too hot to spend your days doing that. Go get a beer and play some slots. You'll be a lot happier. He called out, amused by the commotion. Just then, a knock at the door interrupted his amusement. Richard hurried inside, shutting the patio door behind him, and made his way to the front door. Opening it, he was greeted by a vision of perfection. Mindy stood before him, exuding beauty and confidence. Her shoulder-length black hair complemented her outfit, and colorful artwork adorned her arms. When she spoke, her voice carried a sultry allure. You must be Richard. I'm Mindy. She introduced herself. Before Richard could respond, their attention was drawn to the blaring heavy metal music echoing down the hallway. While Richard felt perturbed, he noticed a visceral reaction from Mindy. Without hesitation, Mindy swiftly entered the room, bypassing Richard with eagerness. He watched her go, a grin spreading across his face as he turned his gaze towards the source of the music. I need to up my party game, apparently, he remarked to himself, intrigued by the lively atmosphere down the hall. Richard closed the door behind him, finding Mindy at the kitchen counter eyeing the bottle of scotch. 25-year-old scotch. Might just be about as old as you are, he quipped, attempting to inject some humor into the moment. Mindy responded with a half-smile and a wink. 
It's close enough. Do you mind? She asked, gesturing towards the bottle. Please help yourself. I have some more party favors that you're more than welcome to, Richard replied, indicating the boxes on the counter. Mindy examined the boxes, noting the numbers etched on top. She nodded thoughtfully as she perused the options. You have some interesting choices here. I'm fond of 12 here, but I need a few drinks in me first. Not a huge fan of 16, though, she remarked. Oh, yeah? Why not? Richard inquired, curious about her preferences. It's a fun trip up, but my system doesn't like it as it's going down. I have friends who swear by it, so your mileage may vary, Mindy explained. I've always been curious about it, so I figured why not, Richard mused. Mindy then picked up box 42, holding it up for Richard to see. As for 42, if you have any plans with me that don't involve drinking and talking, you may want to dive into these sooner rather than later. They take a while to kick in, she advised. You're here all day, right? Richard asked. I'm yours for the next 24 hours, Mindy confirmed. Why don't we sit out on the patio and get to know each other for a bit then? There's plenty of time for the other stuff. Plus, I'd like to give it the old college try first time around, if you know what I mean, Richard suggested. Mindy chuckled politely, raising her glass in agreement. Nothing wrong with that. However, would you mind if we sat inside? I don't want to deal with those people outside. What's their deal anyway? Richard inquired. You know activists, they're always protesting one thing or another, but I don't want to dwell on them. Come on, let's get to know each other, Mindy proposed, leading the way into the living area. Richard and Mindy made their way to the couch, sitting closely together. Richard extended his arm towards Mindy, and she playfully touched it with her fingers, allowing them to dance across it. So Richard, where are you from and how in the world did you find yourself in the high roller suite? Mindy inquired. Knoxville, Tennessee, born and raised, Richard replied. Knoxville. I can't say I can name a single thing about the place, Mindy admitted. Well, about the only two things that are worthwhile are the state college and the fact we had the World's Fair back in 1982, Richard explained. Yeah, that was a little bit before my time, Mindy remarked. You didn't miss much, let me assure you, Richard chuckled. Mindy continued, well, we have the where, but we don't have the how. You're not exactly the normal high roller, so I am curious. I'm not the normal high roller? I'm almost afraid to ask what normal looks like, Richard quipped. Mindy laughed, shaking her head. Don't get me wrong, you're plenty normal. You're just a little young and a little too well put together to be blowing all your money on this. Now how do you know I'm blowing all my money? Richard challenged. Because I know where I work and I've read the contract. Now stop avoiding the question, how did you end up here? Mindy insisted, her touch soothing Richard's nerves. Richard took a long drink of his scotch before answering, well, you know how it goes. Meet a girl, think she's the one, get married, buy a house. Then she turns out to be the Antichrist in a vaguely human form. Mindy chuckled, lightening the mood. She cheated on me, but somehow ended up with the house. Then she decided that wasn't enough and wanted to come after me for alimony. I figured I could either give my money to a lawyer, give it to her, or come out here and enjoy myself. I decided for once in my life I was going to do things my way. Mindy studied him for a moment as she sipped her scotch. You know what? I'll buy that reasoning. Well, thanks, I guess. I mean, it's the truth. I have no reason to lie to you, Richard replied. I know, but I do understand it. I've dated some real pieces of work over the years, which is kind of how I ended up in Vegas, Mindy shared. Really? Where are you from? Richard inquired. Originally, I'm from this tiny town up in Wisconsin. You know, the kind of place where they put welcome to and thank you for visiting on the same sign to save on money? Mindy explained with a smirk. Richard chuckled, his laughter echoing in the dimly lit room, as he nodded in agreement. We have plenty of those back in Tennessee, he said. Mindy tilted her head, a wry smile playing on her lips as she gestured towards her outfit and the array of tattoos adorning her skin. Well, if you've ever been to one... I'm sure you can imagine that life wasn't easy for someone like me who wanted to look like this, she remarked, 
So as soon as I hit 18, I headed out to Los Angeles. Spent some time kicking around out there, got into some bad situations with the wrong people, so I made the move out here. Richard's curiosity peaked. He leaned in slightly, prompting Mindy to continue. And are things better for you out here? He inquired. Mindy took a sip of her drink, her gaze distant for a moment before she responded. Well, I get to work my own hours, make a pretty decent day rate. And, she paused, finishing her drink in one swift motion before grasping Richard's hand. And I get to be in control. With a mischievous glint in her eye, Mindy led him towards the bedroom, their footsteps fading as they disappeared behind the closed door. Hours passed, the suite covered in darkness save for the faint glow from the strip outside. Suddenly, a loud banging shattered the silence, reverberating through the room. Richard stumbled out of the bedroom, draped in a bathrobe, his head throbbing. Yeah, I'm coming, he muttered, his voice raspy. Navigating through the cluttered kitchen, he fumbled for the light switch amidst the remnants of their indulgence. As the knocking persisted, growing more urgent, Richard winced, his headache worsening. I'm coming, I'm coming, he called out, his irritation evident. Mindy peeked out from the bedroom, a playful smirk on her lips. I'm pretty sure that's my line, she teased. Richard couldn't help but chuckle nervously as he reached the door. Swinging it open, he was met with the imposing figure of the concierge. Straightening up instinctively, Richard felt a pang of intimidation at the sight. Good evening, Mr. Beckham, and my apologies for interrupting. However, the midnight hour is upon us, and it is time for you to place your bet, the concierge announced. Glancing back at Mindy, who stood solemnly in the doorway, Richard nodded in understanding. Please, come on. Give me just a minute, and let me put some pants on, he replied. It will take me a moment to set up. Have you decided upon your game? The concierge inquired. Oh yeah, Blackjack, Richard confirmed. Very good, sir, the concierge acknowledged. As Richard retreated into the bedroom to dress, he noticed Mindy already preparing herself. Don't get too dressed now. This isn't going to take long, he joked. I figured you might want a second set of eyes. I do live in Vegas. After all, Mindy quipped back. Appreciating her offer, Richard nodded in agreement. Thank you. Come on, let's get this over with so we can get back to our fun, he suggested, taking Mindy's hand as they emerged from the bedroom. Seated at the table, the concierge presented a fresh deck of cards, meticulously shuffling them before offering Richard to cut. What is your bet, Mr. Beckham? The concierge inquired. I'll do the minimum, Richard replied. $10,000 bet. Very good, sir. Here we go, the concierge acknowledged, dealing the cards. Richard's heart raced as the game unfolded. His first card, a king, elicited a fist pump from him and a comforting pat on the back from Mindy. Observing the dealer's card, a six, Richard pondered his next move as a seven was dealt out to him. That's a good card, he remarked. We're staying, right? The odds are certainly in your favor if you do, she added. Okay, then. I'm staying, Richard decided. Very good, sir, the concierge acknowledged. Richard and Mindy observed with bated breath as the dealer unveiled his whole card, revealing a queen. The dealer is at 16 and must hit, the concierge announced. With a swift motion, he flipped over the top card from the deck, exposing a four. Richard's heart sank as the card landed on the table. The dealer has 20 to your 17. The house wins, the concierge declared. Richard felt a wave of disbelief wash over him, nearly causing him to topple from his chair. Meanwhile, the concierge busied himself with his phone, swiftly calculating Richard's losses. After deducting your losses, you currently sit at $15,326. Please enjoy the next day of your stay, and I will see you at midnight once again, the concierge informed him displaying the balance on his phone. Stunned into silence, Richard sat there, grappling with the reality of his losses. Mindy, sensing his distress, gently rubbed his back, offering words of comfort. It'll be okay. Why don't you grab that 42 box and let me help you forget about your troubles? She suggested soothingly. 
Richard snapped out of his daze, a spark of determination igniting within him. You know what, you're right. I'm still here, and we're going to have some fun. He exclaimed, forcing himself to get back to the fun. Chapter 4 The morning light streamed through the window, casting a soft glow over the room as Richard stirred from his slumber. His gaze drifted to the figure of Mindy sleeping peacefully beside him, her features illuminated by the gentle light. He couldn't help but pause to admire her beauty before reluctantly extricating himself from the warmth of the bed. Staggering into the main room, Richard made his way to the kitchen in search of coffee, only to find the absence of any. As he reached for the phone to call for some, a thought struck him. You know, those guys by the elevator work hard. The least I can do is offer to have a pot sent up, he mused aloud to himself. With resolve in his step, Richard opened the door and stepped into the hallway. Before his foot could touch the carpet, however, the sound of deafening music assaulted his ears from the left. Curiosity peaked, he turned to investigate, spotting two guards stationed against the wall opposite the source of the noise, with an older man standing before them. With a resigned sigh, the man crossed the threshold, and as the door shut behind him, the cacophony lessened. Observing the guards making their way back to their post, Richard caught their attention. Is everything okay, Mr. Beckham? One of the guards inquired. Yeah, everything's just fine. I was about to order some coffee and figured I'd see if you guys needed any. Richard offered. The guards exchanged a glance before one of them nodded. Yeah, I wouldn't turn down a cup. I tell you what, when you call it in, tell the concierge it's for us and to ask for some pastries as well. We'll hook you up, the guard replied. Grateful for the gesture, Richard returned to the room, closing the door behind him. He found Mindy standing in the doorway of the bedroom, a sleepy smile gracing her features. Good morning. I was about to order some coffee. Would you like something? Breakfast? Another box of 42s. Richard greeted her with a slightly awkward smile. Mindy returned his smile, her eyes sparkling with amusement. Only if you plan on keeping me around for another day. I know a lot of high rollers like to have fun with the variety at their fingertips, she teased. Richard's smile softened, a sincerity shining in his eyes. Mindy, I'll level with you. You're the first woman I've had a meaningful conversation with in the last five years. And I've only been divorced for two. I think I'd like keeping that going, he confessed. Mindy's expression softened, a warmth filling her gaze as she nodded in understanding. In that case, I'll take a ham and cheese omelet and orange juice, she replied, her voice gentle. Consider it ordered, Richard affirmed. The morning unfolded into a leisurely affair, with Richard and Mindy savoring breakfast and coffee on the patio. The cool breeze, combined with the height of their vantage point, created a serene atmosphere that enveloped them. As they indulged in their meal, the distant sound of sirens echoed from below, drawing their attention to the ongoing protests. Richard noticed the contemplative expression on Mindy's face and inquired about her well-being. You doing okay over there? He asked gently. Mindy sighed, her gaze fixed on the scene below. Yeah, it's just the protesters. What are they protesting exactly? Richard inquired. It doesn't matter. Come on, let's head back in and grab that menu. I have a few suggestions that might make the afternoon one for the books, Mindy suggested, redirecting their focus. Richard grinned, impressed by Mindy's enthusiasm. I leave it to you then, my dear. What's my budget? Mindy teased. I'm planning on you staying tomorrow, too. And you saw my balance, Richard replied with a chuckle. Mindy flashed a mischievous smile. I would say that this is a day we'll never forget, but if I get my order right, then remembering isn't exactly on the menu. Amidst laughter, they retreated indoors, where Mindy, true to her word, orchestrated a day of revelry that surpassed all expectations. From partying to drinking, smoking, and passionate interludes in the bedroom, the hours blurred into a whirlwind of excitement. As the evening wore on, exhaustion finally caught up with them, and they collapsed onto the couch, eyes fixed on the clock. I wonder how that creepy guy would react if I opened the door before he knocked? Just jump out and scare him, you know, Richard mused, breaking the silence. Mindy's laughter, laced with the effects of their indulgences, filled the room as she entertained the idea. 
He might punch you, or he might keel over with a heart attack. Either way, it would be funny as hell. You should do it, she encouraged, her eyes sparkling with mischief. Really, I should, Richard questioned. Yeah, yeah, do it. Mindy egged him on. Richard's laughter echoed through the room as he approached the door, his prank interrupted by a sudden knock that startled him. Both he and Mindy dissolved into fits of laughter, their mirth contagious as they struggled to compose themselves. With a grin, Richard reached out to open the door, only to be met by the sight of the concierge standing before them. Before the concierge could utter a word, a gunshot rang out in the hallway, followed by a harrowing scream. Richard's laughter subsided instantly, replaced by a sobering alertness as he peered down the corridor. But the concierge gently ushered him back inside, diverting his attention to the task at hand. It's time for your bet, Mr. Beckham, the concierge reminded him. Come on in, Richard replied, gesturing for him to enter. Mindy joined Richard at the table as the concierge placed the shuffled deck before him, awaiting his decision. Do you still wish to play blackjack? The concierge inquired. Yep, that's my game, Richard confirmed. Very good, sir. However, there is a slight issue, the concierge revealed. And what's that? Richard asked, his brow furrowing in concern. Your balance is just under $10,000 so this will be an all-in bet," the concierge explained. Richard glanced at Mindy for confirmation, receiving a nonchalant shrug in response. I ordered what you told me to this morning, Mindy confirmed. Are you sure? Richard questioned. The lady is correct, sir. When she ordered, you were still over the threshold. However, you placed an order right at five o'clock, which put you under, the concierge clarified. Richard racked his brain, trying to recall the events of the morning, until realization dawned on him. I'm not sure what you got us this morning, but it was fantastic stuff, Richard remarked with a grin, before turning his attention back to the blackjack game. Okay, all or nothing. Deal them out, he instructed, his resolve firm as he prepared to wager it all. The concierge nodded in acknowledgement dealing a king in front of Richard and a queen in front of himself. Come on, big card, big card, Richard urged, his heart pounding with anticipation. His plea to the universe was answered as another queen was dealt to him. Pumping his fist in the air, he declared confidently, staying on 20. Very good, sir, the concierge affirmed, his expression neutral, as he reached for his own card. With a swift motion, he flipped over his card, revealing an ace. Richard's body went numb as the concierge announced, Blackjack. How? Just how could that have happened? Richard questioned, his voice tinged with disbelief. It's the luck of the draw, sir. Sometimes it just does not work out, the concierge explained calmly. So that's it? I'm busted? Richard inquired, his tone resigned. Perhaps the concierge replied cryptically. Perhaps? What does that mean? Either I'm busted or I'm not, Richard pressed, frustration evident in his voice. I have been authorized by another guest to offer you a one-time deal, the concierge revealed. Okay, I'm listening, Richard responded, his interest piqued. He wishes to have a drink with you and pay for that honor. For one drink, he will give you $10,000, the concierge proposed. Richard leaped out of his seat excitement coursing through him as he exclaimed, hell yeah, for 10 grand, absolutely. That's a no-brainer. But Mindy's reaction was starkly different. She sobered up immediately, rushing over to Richard with urgency in her voice. No, Richard, no, don't do it, please, just don't do it, she pleaded, her eyes filled with concern. What are you talking about? It's $10,000. That gets me back in the game and gives us more time together, Richard countered, unable to fathom turning down such a lucrative offer. Mindy's distress was palpable, her demeanor shifting as if a flood of memories overwhelmed her. No, I'm not doing this again. If you say yes to him, I'm walking out that door, Mindy asserted, her voice trembling with emotion. I thought you were here for the night? Isn't that what I paid for? Richard questioned, perplexed by Mindy's sudden change in demeanor. 
I don't care. If you take that deal, I'm leaving. Please, don't do this, Mindy implored, desperation evident in her tone. It's free money, Mindy Richard countered, unable to comprehend why Mindy was reacting so strongly. Ignoring Mindy's pleas, Richard turned to the concierge, nodding his head in agreement. Tell him he has a deal, Richard instructed. Very good, Mr. Beckham, the concierge acknowledged, his fingers swiftly moving over his phone to transfer the funds. As Richard's account balance increased by another $10,000, he turned to show Mindy, only to find her grabbing her belongings and heading towards the door. Come on, Mindy, we have another couple of days of fun together. Let's enjoy them, Richard urged, reaching out to stop her. But Mindy refused to be swayed, tears streaming down her face as she struggled to break free from Richard's grasp. Let me go. Let me go, she cried out, her distress escalating. Why are you crying? Richard demanded, confusion clouding his features. Mindy sobbed uncontrollably, her words choked with emotion as she finally managed to speak. I wish you would have listened to me, and we could have had one more beautiful night together. But I can't, I just, I can't, she confessed, her heartache laid bare. With that, Mindy threw open the door and fled, leaving behind a bewildered and frustrated Richard. Yeah, fine then, run away. I have the money to do anything I want. Richard shouted after her, his anger masking the hurt and confusion swirling inside him. As Richard stepped back into the room, the cacophony of loud heavy metal music from down the hallway reached his ears, accompanied by what sounded like muffled screams. Ignoring the disturbing noise, he refocused his attention on the concierge, Though he attempted to maintain a facade of toughness, Richard was internally distraught at Mindy walking out on him. Despite knowing it was irrational, her departure left a profound void, marking the end of the most meaningful relationship he had experienced in years. Shaking off his emotions, Richard addressed the concierge, who stood calmly, waiting for the next request. Hey, what happens if I blow all my money tonight? Richard inquired. It is after midnight and thus a new day. If your account balance is zero in 24 hours, you will be slated for departure the following morning, the concierge explained matter-of-factly. Okay then, I want three of your hottest women on your roster sent up here until checkout, and redo my order from today too. That was nice. Will that be in the budget? Richard requested. We can make it work, Mr. Beckham. I will have them here within two hours. I hope that you enjoy the remainder of your stay. Chapter 5 As the marathon 36-hour party neared its conclusion, Richard slouched on the couch, his gaze fixed on the television screen. In his right hand, he clutched a nearly empty bottle of 25-year-old scotch, while his left hand rested on the leg of an unconscious 25-year-old woman beside him. Observing her stir in her sleep, struggling to get comfortable while cuddling up to another woman, Richard couldn't help but grin, reminiscing about the events of the previous day. If I had thought of it, I would have ordered a video camera. Because yesterday was something that needed to be preserved for future generations to study, he mused aloud, chuckling to himself. As he glanced up at the television, the news caught his attention, and he quickly reached for the remote to turn up the volume upon noticing a story about the Fortune Hunter Casino. The camera panned across the crowd of protesters, one of them stepping up to the mic to voice their discontent. What they're doing is immoral even for this town. It makes me sick to know that this is going on in my backyard, the protester exclaimed. The camera then shifted back to a young female newscaster. As you can see, there are some strong feelings about the High Roller program here at the Fortune Hunter, which is celebrating its one-year anniversary next week. We had a chance to interview Governor Smith about the controversy surrounding the program, which was his brainchild. In the pre-recorded interview, Governor Smith, a slick and well-dressed younger man, grinned confidently as he defended the initiative. We have a real crisis in this country when it comes to people being able to retire. Housing, healthcare, basic necessities, all of them are going through the roof with no end in sight. And the end result is that people find themselves in dire situations when they get older, Governor Smith explained passionately. This not only puts a strain on the individual, but the system as a whole and the High Roller Initiative aims to address that in some small way. 
But what about the critics who say? The news anchor interjected. The governor's interruption cut through the newscaster's attempt to interject, his voice commanding attention. The loudest critics have a comfortable life. They don't know what it's like to struggle, to not know where your next meal is coming from. They also get to enjoy all the luxuries this life has to offer, something the people who sign up for the high roller package don't get to experience until they get here, Governor Smith asserted firmly. But, the newscaster tried to interject once more, only to be interrupted again by the governor. Do you know how many people signed up for the high roller package in the first year? 20,000, Governor Smith continued, his tone impassioned, with another 100,000 on the waiting list. And that's with only 12 casinos taking part in the program. There is a huge demand for this, not just because people want to live the high life for a few days and do what they've always dreamed of doing, but to also die with dignity. We have state qualified physicians who aid with the departure process, making it completely painless. They don't have to struggle with starvation while living under a bridge in their later years. They get to go out on their own terms and have a damn fun time doing it, the governor elaborated, his conviction unwavering. Your critics have likened you to a butcher, a mass murderer. How do you respond to that, the newscaster asked. I laugh at it, because it's so absurd. I'm not forcing anybody to enter the program, nobody is in fact. All we've done is fully embrace the freedom this country has in order to offer people a choice. Not only does it help people, it helps the system and has been a boon to our economy as well. While the rest of the country is teetering on recession, our state is thriving with double-digit growth. So the critics can keep their self-important moral high ground. I'm going to keep doing what's right for the average person and my constituents, Governor Smith asserted confidently. As the interview concluded, and the news shifted to another story, Richard clicked off the television, the weight of the governor's words lingering in the air. Just then, a knock sounded at the door. Glancing at his watch, Richard sighed, realizing it was nearing 8 o'clock. Well, Richard, it was a fun ride. But it looks like it's about that time, he mused to himself. Richard pulled himself up off the couch, tightening his bathrobe around him as he shuffled up to the door. Another knock sounded as he approached. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, Richard called out, preparing to greet whoever was on the other side. As he swung the door open, he was met with the sight of the concierge standing there, flanked by the two guards. Good morning, Mr. Beckham. I'm afraid it is your departure time, the concierge announced solemnly. Yeah, just let me get my... Richard started, then paused, a chuckle escaping him as reality dawned on him. Well, I don't really have anything to get, do I? Not where I'm going, right? He quipped. Ultimately, yes. However, per your agreement, you do get a drink before you depart, the concierge reminded him. Fantastic. Let's get to it then. Richard agreed, stepping out into the hallway. As he emerged, he noticed Jimmy stepping out from the door across the way, nodding to everyone but focusing his attention on the concierge. Hey, just the man I wanted to see. Can we have a chat once you get wrapped up here? I have a unique request, Jimmy addressed the concierge. Certainly, Mr. Barnes, the concierge replied. Hey, Jimmy, good to see you, buddy. I really appreciate you buying me that drink. I put that money to real good use yesterday. Let me assure you, Richard greeted Jimmy warmly. Jimmy looked at Richard with confusion. I mean, if you want me to pour you a shot, I can. But I didn't buy you any drink, friend. Richard's expression shifted to one of bewilderment. You're the only guest I've spoken to since I checked in. If you didn't buy me the drink, then who did? As if on cue, loud heavy metal music began blaring down the hallway, causing Richard's panic to rise. The concierge placed a reassuring hand on Richard's shoulder. An agreement is an agreement, he reminded him solemnly. Richard struggled against the guard's firm grip, but their strength prevailed as they propelled him forward. Casting a final glance towards Jimmy, who could only shake his head in resignation, Richard soon realized resistance was futile. Eventually, they reached the designated room, the thunderous music echoing through the hallway. The concierge stepped forward, rapping on the door several times. As the door swung open, Richard could discern little in the dimly lit room, save for a single light illuminating two mugs of beer on the kitchen counter. There was no sign of anyone else present. 
Mr. Beckham, we very much appreciate you choosing the fortune hunter for your departure. We wish you the best, the concierge intoned before the guards shoved Richard inside, sending him sprawling across the floor. Struggling to regain his bearings, Richard watched as a looming figure closed the door behind him. In the darkness, he discerned the unmistakable sound of a lock clicking into place, sealing him in. Sit and drink. The commanding voice of the man broke the silence, leaving no room for argument. Richard complied, scrambling to his feet and hastening to the counter. As his eyes adjusted to the dimness, Richard noticed the kitchen counter mirrored that of his own room, save for the dozens of boxes worth of chips stacked up, signifying the man's vast wealth. Sit and drink. The command came again, and Richard obeyed, swiftly downing the contents of the first mug in a single gulp. Now the other one, the man instructed, his voice brooking no refusal. Richard, overcome with fear, complied with the command, lifting the second glass and gulping down its contents hastily. As he set the empty mug down, a wave of dizziness washed over him, leaving him feeling disoriented. Furrowing his brow in confusion, Richard examined his hand closely, flicking his palm with his other hand, but registering no sensation. That's strange, he muttered, voicing his confusion. The beer was spiked with something to help you relax, the man explained calmly. But why? Richard questioned, his anxiety mounting. In the next moment, the lights in the room flicked on, momentarily blinding Richard. As his eyes adjusted to the sudden brightness, he was confronted with a scene of unimaginable horror. Instead of the familiar pool table, a grotesque wooden rack occupied the center of the room, surrounded by tables littered with sinister tools, many stained with dried blood. Panic surged through Richard as he attempted to rise and flee, but his legs gave way beneath him, sending him crashing to the ground. Desperately, he attempted to crawl away, only to hear the heavy footsteps of the looming figure approaching from behind. With a grip like iron, the man seized Richard by the shoulder, effortlessly flipping him over before looming over him menacingly. Why? Why did you drug me? Richard pleaded, his voice trembling with fear. Because I hate it when my playthings black out too early, the man retorted coldly, producing a remote control and cranking up the volume of the heavy metal music to a deafening level. All Richard could do was scream in terror as the man dragged him towards the dreaded rack, his fate sealed in the grip of unspeakable horror. The End Gee.